about um, the year 2000, something dramatic happened. You know, they say in my tradition, it takes a long time for the fruit to ripen, and then when it's ripe, it falls. So in 2001, the fruit fell. And I'll tell you what happened is, my father had died, and he was a very famous, well-known cardiologist, a very human, uh, humane, uh, compassionate uh, healer himself. And I had gone uh, to the Himalayas to throw his ashes in the Ganges. And I happened to go to a temple where they kept records of our ancestors. And so, you know, I saw uh, letters from my father when he had brought the ashes of his parents and letters from my grandfather and great-grandfather. And I asked this man, the priest, uh, how long have you been keeping the records? And he said, well, we've been keeping them since the time of Alexander the Great. And if you go down to the basement, we have records in Greek and Macedonian. And I started to do a little calculation in my head. You know, if you go back 50 generations, that's literally trillions of people that lived, loved, lived, loved, made love, and suffered and died. And if one of them was missing or not in the mood, I wouldn't be here. So, you know, I was totally awestruck by the mystery of my own existence that I should be perpetually surprised that I exist. And if I'm not perpetually surprised that I exist, I, I shouldn't be here. I mean, that gratitude was overwhelming for me at that moment, also the question of identity. But then this priest did something very dramatic. Before we threw the ashes into the river, he said, um, why don't you write a letter to your children because one day they'll bring your ashes here. And at that moment, it suddenly occurred to me, which, you know, the fact of my own mortality, which we don't think about, the fact that I'm already in the autumn of my life, uh, that two seasons have gone and the third is coming to a close and the winter of my life is approaching, uh, the fact of impermanence, all these things that I grew up with and thought about but never really confronted. And you know the, the, the overwhelming mystery and the gratitude of that moment, I suddenly found myself truly non-local. I could see myself uh, from reality. You know, I realized that the idea that you are in a body, squeezed into the volume of a body in the span of a lifetime, that's a socially and culturally induced hallucination. Okay, you are something much more mysterious, much more eternal, much more immutable, transcendent. And I experienced that. And I saw that there was a Deepak Chopra there, but he was a transient role I had taken on, like a great Shakespearean actor. One day you're um, Hamlet and Julius Caesar or whatever. It's my destiny to play an infinity of roles, but I'm not the roles I'm playing. And that moment was so striking that I dedicated from that moment my life to not me, but to service. <laughs>